Hi guys, in this video I'm gonna show you a device that I made and actually designed. Not that I invented circuits used in it, but I put them together nonetheless. I put them, I mean, the blocks together, building blocks. It's, you know, it's very hard to reinvent the wheel. So anyway, this device will allow you to test breakdown voltage of a Zener diodes of DIEX now that's another Zener diode but you can also test breakdown voltage of a silicon or germanium rect of a rectifier diodes of a transistor spin junctions forward voltage of the LEDs and as well forward voltage of any of those diodes as well device looks like this can see it's very simple it's very small uses very few parts very simple and very cheap to put together won't take you long just take an evening and you'll be granted with this stuff other side is very straightforward just a couple of joints now these transistors switch this transformer and that forms a boost converter it's not your usual boost converter with a choke it's actually a transformer which has a primary being switched by these two transistors and high voltage secondary which creates high voltage when it then gets rectified by a full bridge rectifier smoothed by this cap and then fed, fed into this circuit these two transistors are actually very small, as you can see, two 92 packages, and you won't be able to tell what the hell they are because of this weird ass Soviet markings, and I can't tell either, and I can't really tell neither because. But I looked up a datasheet for them, and that's essentially a transistor, Gener generic transistor, but with a collector current of 300 milliamps. DC collector current 300 milliamps, pulsed collector current 500 milliamps. So just take a BC037 and you'll be fine. These transistors, however, are PNP transistors. BC037 is NPN, but you can just flip polarities and you'll be fine. Anyway, nonetheless, let's go to the schematic and I'll show you what this is. Well, originally I planned the circuit to use a dual sieve as a voltage booster and it did work quite fine but not good enough for me the voltage will sag if I apply load for it and I wasn't happy with it because I wanted uh, it to be to handle like 3 milliamps or so of load and it won't so yeah so I dumped this circuit essentially and I used this circuit which is used in the final design it uses two transistors, in this case PNPs, they don't have to be that way, you can use NPNs as well, just flip the polarities. You can see one resistor, couple of, in this transformer. This transformer is scavenged from a CFL's ballast, originally that was a choke, and choke instead of transformer has, a, has an air gap in the core, which prevents the core from saturating when DC current is being passed through the coil. So one, this core is comprised of two E pieces, and it looks like this, and you can see the, the gap in the middle. How it's formed is that one piece has all the columns on the same height. Other piece has center column a bit shorter than the other two. So what I did to eliminate that gap, because you, you have to use a core which has no air gap here. It just uh, took and sanded them down, essentially sanded those two outer columns to the same height as the middle one. In this way I eliminated the air gap. And yeah, as you can see collector windings here and here are five turns each. Feedback is three turns. Do not use two, use three. I was just experimenting and three works best. And yeah, sorry but this I don't know number of turns here because I left the original 
winding that was on the choke and I reused it as a high voltage secondary. But you have to essentially experiment with it. I would say like take and wind 100 turns here and check the voltage. Use a high, vo high voltage capacitor on the output because that, that can blow the low voltage ones up because I don't know and you won't know what kind of voltage they'll be on the output. The bridge has to be comprised of rather high voltage diodes which have a reverse breakdown voltage of over 150 volts of course. And yeah, the cross section of the transformer is about 10 square millimeters. Doesn't have to be that precise, you can use a bit less, you can use a bit more. The scene is powered from a 3 volts, 2 double A's. There is a switch, which is a test switch, which you can see here. So what I do, I connect 3 volts here, I connect device under test to these leads. Red is positive, black is negative. If I want to test a breakdown voltage of a, like a Zener diode, I connect cathode here, anode here, press the button, of course with 3 volts being applied here, and I will put my multimeter leads into this crocodile clips. I put the device, press the button, and I will read out the breakdown voltage on a multimeter. As well, I can test a forward voltage just by placing anode here and cathode here. Press any button and you will read out forward voltage. How I'm able to do that without any damage to the thing? Because there is over 150 volts here. Well, this circuit. It's a current source, which is here. Very simple one. You can see one transistor, two diodes, kind of like a reference, and a meter resistor. This resistor actually does nothing else and feeds these diodes with a bit of current so they will create a voltage drop and it's about 1.2 volts here and this during regulation will have like 0.6 volts essentially this voltage minus base emitter junction voltage of the transistor and you can determine current that will be synced by using this. You can take your voltage, which is this voltage here, divided by car by resistance, in my case it's 1.3k, and I'm getting 0.46 milliamps, 460 microamps, which is just fine for testing small stuff. I can up it to about 1 milliamp just by putting another 1.3k in parallel. That's what I'm gonna do with the help of a switch. In a final version when I'm, when I'm gonna put this in a box and put a little switch with help of which I'm gonna be able to select half a milliamp or and one milliamp current. That's very simple, doesn't have to be explained anymore. So let's test some stuff, shall we? And that's how you put the leads in place, just force them inside here. Be careful not to stab yourself, of course. And that's it. Very easy. You can see multimeter, right? And first let's apply 3 volts from my power supply. The circuit draws about 0.3 amps. I connected it right now. Select 3 volts. I'm gonna press this button and you will see a consumption. See, 0.3 amps and drops because capacitor gets charged and pulls less current. Okay, and you can see here a voltage on the terminals which without load will jump to the full voltage there is on that filter cap. Okay, you can see the output voltage. 160 volts quite a lot so be careful not to touch that can actually touch that it will give me just a little jingle because it's current limited but nonetheless let's start with this transistor which is 2SC945 if camera will, would cooperate you will be able to see it but 
I guess you won't. Well, you have to trust me here, it's a transistor. As in fact, you can see one of the leads broken off. That's a collector. I'm gonna test the various breakdown voltage of a base emitter junction. Emitter is here, base is here. So apply negative to the base, apply positive to the emitter, press a button. Oh, would help if you be able to see it. But nonetheless, see, nine and a half, nine point something volts, nine point six, nine point five, something like that. And it will stay there until this voltage here will drop below that, as you can see, it just happened. This actually circuit discharges the capacitor on itself because there is a path for a current to flow in any in any way. You can see here there is 100k resistor in these two diodes, and that's permanently applied to this capacitor. So the capacitor will discharge through this resistor and these two diodes without nothing. With oh, this leads open, no problem. Okay, now let's test the diac. That's a device very often used in switch in a simple switch mode power supplies, like the one I showed you in previous video, and phase fired controllers. It should have a breakdown voltage of about 27 volts in each direction, so it doesn't matter which direction you put it in. So I connect it like that. Okay. I press a button. Well, what do we have here? 26.5. Perfectly fine. Now let's connect it other way around. Twenty-five point twenty-six. So this diac is just working as it should. Now let's test the rather high voltage zener diode because that's funny. This zener is actually a one volt zener, fifty-six volt. Again, you may you may not be able to see it, but it is a fifty-six volt zener, and you can say cathode band, right, right here on the left. <coughs> and if I'm gonna connect it in forward bias, nothing bad will happen. You'll just see a forward voltage of the diode. See, 0.5 volts, just fine. No walkers. Again, 0.5 volts, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, something like that. Connect it in the reverse bias zone, positive to cathode. Let the voltage rise, let off the button, and you can see 55.6 or something like that. You can as well test the LEDs with it, but be careful with testing LEDs. If you put them wrong way around, they will burn out. They will short out. I don't quite understand why the current is limited, but nonetheless, they will burn out. But you can, if you are careful enough to put them right way around, it is completely safe to test them. Let's test, for example, this 4.8 millimeter or 5 millimeter white LED. If I'm gonna connect it right way around, anode to the positive, you'll be able to see that it glows. Glows not that bright because the current is about 0.5 milliamps as well. Well, this LED is shorted actually. Huh. Fantastic. Are you kidding me? This LED is shot. Yeah, this LED is shot. As you can see, breakdown voltage of about 90 volts. Check it out. So it's not really shorted. It has a breakdown voltage of about 87 volts. But if I connect it in forward bias, it doesn't glow. And that's weird. Oh, it does actually. God damn. Why it does that? Or was I blind and it glowed the first time? Well, that's his weird ass diode. 
Well, anyway, bad example, I have to admit. <sighs> Let's test another one. Let's pick some colorful stuff. Again, be careful to put them right way around. Otherwise, they will burn out. Ask me how I know. I ruined a couple of three watt dives with this. So, pfft, yeah. Now, what the hell is wrong with you? Well, that is just awesome. Was walking before. Ah, you can see it just shorted. You can see how the wo I'm still holding the button, by the way. You can see the voltage rising, then it falls down to 0.8 volts. LED is shut now. So that's because that's why you shouldn't really do that to LEDs. And god damn it, it was walking. You can see you now press a button, zero volts, because the LED is shorted. <coughs> it was working a minute ago, god damn. Let me take a 10 watt diode. 10 watt LED, I mean. <coughs> And I'll show you that you can use this device to test them as well. Would be awesome if I'm gonna burn this one as well. Wouldn't it? Okay. Apply positive to positive. Apply negative to negative. It should glow. Yeah, you can see it glows. So you can test these diodes. Very easy. You can test even this tw diode that will require forward voltage of 12 volts, it's an LED matrix. So no problem with that, as you saw. Okay, so that's that. Thanks for watching, see ya.